Hey everyone, it's Steve. Well, I did a thing. Um, all right. I have a box. There's something in it. It's something that's a lot different from what I normally do. Oh boy. <laughs> So, you know, I watch RBP trains, Eric's trains. There's a lot. I saw Norm's trains lately. I see a lot of these O scalers with the three rail O scale trains. And the scale versions, like, like the Lionel Legacy and, you know, Atlas Premier, those kind of uh, pieces of locomotives and rolling stock, look really good. And they're big. They have great audio. There's just a lot of mass and heft to them. And I've always wanted an O scale switching layout. And I know I got to finish the two by four layout and I got to finish the one by six N scale switching layout. And I'm going to do those. That's the priority. But, you know, here and there, just for a change of pace, I'm going to start working on an O scale switching layout. And I'll go over some plans here in a minute. But first off, let's look at what I'm going to run on that layout. So, yes, it's a Lionel Legacy locomotive. The first time I've ever bought one. And I bought an SW1. I saw the SW1s and they looked really nice. And so I thought I would get one. Oh, we got traction tires and coupler boxes. Oh, and even a, uh, a pipette for adding smoke fluid. So anyway, here it is. Definitely a lot of heft to it. But wow, that looks really good. The main thing that I really appreciate about O scale is that you don't break it by looking at it funny. I, I mean, part of this goes back to my N scale uh, locomotive that I recently broke into pieces. And I, I broke the trucks on that thing. I don't know how, like I was just disassembling everything. And then the next thing I know, an entire truck is broken into pieces. Like, like literally cracked and, and fallen apart. And N-Scale stuff is really delicate. And I, and I love N-Scale because of the compact nature of the sizes you can build stuff in. But O-Scale is great. Not that you can't break O-Scale stuff by any means, but you know, the handrails are obviously a lot thicker gauge metal. Um, all the details are a lot heftier, uh, you know, and all that kind of thing. And so it really, you know, you're, you're not going to just break stuff by looking at it. And these legacy units are really nice. There's a lot of great detail on here. I'm not going to do a full review on this right now, but you know, I did want to show it and kind of look at what I'm going to be doing uh, in terms of future builds later this year at some point. So anyway, let me go ahead and put this on my little test track I have here and we'll see if I can get it to run. Now I do not have a controller at this point. I am going to get just like a regular YNL basic controller. But you can run this by Bluetooth, and so that's what I'm going to try to do today. So let's try it. Okay, so I have it on some sections of O-Scale Atlas track here, and I don't have a any kind of uh, power pack or anything that is designed for O-Scale, but I do have a whole bunch of these wall transformers. This is 16 volts, so this should work fine uh, to get everything going. Three, the three-rail O-Scale stuff does run on AC power. Oh, it's smoking too. <laughs> I 
Whoops. All right, so I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I, I'm kind of opening Pandora's box here a little bit. I, I really wish I had the space for a large O-scale layout. Um, I don't at this point. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I really like the size and heft and audio and everything else with these O-scale engines. The line of Legacy line is really nice. But anyway, this will be another, yeah, another project I'll be working on during the next year or so as I try to build a fun O-scale layout. So anyway, let's take a look at what I'm trying to do here. So anyway, you can see here um, one of my potential designs. I'm kind of playing around with a couple different ones. So this one was what I thought I was gonna do, but I think I'm gonna change it. But anyway, this first idea uh, uses O54 turnout and some, an O36 curve on the end. And this can do O31 curves, so which is actually like a 15 and a half inch radius, which is like a, you know, it's like an eight inch radius in an HO scale. So it's obviously very tight, but you know, this stuff is all designed to, to take those really tight curves. So that is one reason why I'm doing the three rail and not like a scale, not, not a two rail O. Um, but I wanna do all full scale, O scale equipment on the three rail layout. And of course all the structures and everything will be true O scale. So we'll see how all, that, how all that goes, but it's an opportunity to try modeling something larger that I have never tried before. Anyway, you can see the idea here. Uh, I'll have a few sidings for industries. Uh, the one on the top right would basically hold two cars. The one on the bottom right and left would hold a car. So basically four car spots, plus uh, I'll have the runaround there. Now this layout here is what I might do instead. Uh, the problem with, with this one is that it has a shorter runaround. I can still do one car, which is really all I need. But the right-hand side is set up as an ingle nook. So there's the one long track and then the two shorter ones. And so you can do three 40-foot cars on a long one, two 40-foot cars on a shorter one. And way back in the day, I had a one by three foot HO scale ingle nook switching layout, which I had some videos on. I'll have links to those somewhere. Uh, or down in the description. And that, you know, so it was, an, it was a one by three HO angle nook. That was a three, two, two car arrangement. So you could do three cars on the long track, two on the two shorter ones. And so this is essentially a scaled up version of that. So if I were to scale that up, it'd be six feet long, you know, two by six feet. And this is two by eight feet. Now that one, the HO one, I could only do like hopper cars. I couldn't do 40 foot box cars, wasn't quite enough room. And uh, this one will have enough room for the 40 foot cars being a little bit longer. And so it'll work uh, you know, pretty nicely in that regard. But this will have a little bit more operational potential just because I do have the runaround track and everything else. So I'll, I'll have to decide what I'll probably end up doing is, is you know, buying the track, laying it out and actually trying it, you know, operating with it in both configurations, see which one I like better and, and go from there. So uh, this, What's weird with the way the O54 turnouts are is that they don't, it doesn't quite line up on the right hand side and so I'll have to actually end up cutting a piece of track, but not a big deal, but everything else will work out okay. Uh, so I'll be trying this, no, not right away. I don't know when I'll actually start building this. Um, I do really wanna make a lot of headway on the other two end scale layouts here before I get involved in this. And so, you know, as I kind of accumulate money from YouTube and everything else, I'll, I'll gradually acquire supplies that I need to build that. And so later this year, I'll start working on it, but you know, kind of a preview of that. And I'll, I'll maybe uh, have some videos in between as I you know, get some new box cars or you know, whatever else I get and uh, some of the track pieces and start playing around a little bit with uh, seeing how stuff works and, and all of that. But yeah, we'll see how it goes anyway. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, do you do a lot of multiple scales? I still have my HO scale switching layout, which I occasionally run. I have the, you know, the N scale projects I'm working on. Now I'll have an O scale one too. And I do have that S scale uh, train set that was my father's from the 40s or 50s, uh, probably the early 50s. And so I'll pull that out one day and take a look at that too in a video. So anyway, look for updates coming up here in the weeks and months ahead on the future O-scale switching layout that I'll hopefully be building as we progress through the latter part of this year. 
Anyway, the next couple of videos will be back to the two by four foot end scale layout. I'll be doing some wiring. I actually have a DC handheld throttle. I'll be adding on where you can have a selector switch between the DC throttle and the DC one. And then I'll have a video on weathering and ballasting the Unitrack on part of the layout and uh, obviously a lot more structure builds coming up as well. But anyway, starting my adventure in O-Scale. That's all for now and thanks for watching. Bye.